but I really am unhappy about it because I think that uh, this is called an illegal uh, immigration bill. And indeed, Suella Braverman, I think talking to the Sunday Times correspondent, Matt Dathan, in the last 24 hours, has said that anyone who arrives in the country, this country, illegally can be deported to Rwanda before anything is done about their cases. If that is the case, my argument would be that under international law, an asylum seeker is not actually uh, illegal as such. Um, but there are a lot of people who do arrive here under immigration rules who are illegal. And therefore, I would be questioning who it is exactly that Suella Braverman uh, and her people are going to actually remove to Rwanda. And of course, there are a lot of politics going on in Westminster. Some of the biggest tests for Rishi Sunak's prime ministership or premiership are coming along this week. We've been talking a little bit about immigration, but there's also the chance for MPs to get a say on the new Brexit arrangement as the so-called Stormont break gets a vote. And the Home Secretary will be back from her visit to Rwanda. So can the Stop the Boats policy get the Conservative government back on track when it comes to controlling those who are coming across the Channel? Well, let's get into that now with Lord Kirkhope, a former Conservative Immigration Minister and Member of the European Parliament. Welcome to Sunday Morning. Hi, good morning. Morning. Now, we've just heard from David Willits and, and me and Adam there just chatting about it, some of the biggest challenges that Rishi Sunak faces. Do you think that the government can meet the challenge of trying to make everybody feel better off by the next election? Is it is it possible? Well, I, uh, my, I, I'm actually rather more optimistic than some people about this because uh, having look, you know, been, in, been in the government of uh, Margaret Thatcher and then John Major, um, I have a view that if we can get rid of some of the stickier items, the, and these are predominantly uh, immigration, Northern Ireland, and also our future EU relationship, uh, and we can show that our government is actually rather more competent uh, than previous administrations, even conservative ones, if it can show it's uh, almost technocratic, almost boring, I suppose, if it can show its competence, and then we can bring out the uh, real policies of Labour, um, it does seem to me that uh, the Conservatives have got a reasonable chance of getting re-elected. But, but there are a lot of ifs and buts in this. Uh, and I was just talk, hearing Adam a moment ago. Yes, I mean, and also David Willits, my friend, uh, talking about the economy. Yes, but we want to show competence in the way we manage the economy. And I think that is starting to happen with the combination of Rishi Sunak and, uh, and Jeremy Hunt. I mean, one of the one of the issues is that you were talking about, there's a couple of them there facing Rishi Sunak, is immigration. I mean, we've seen Suella Bravman in, in Rwanda this weekend. First off, can I ask you, are you comfortable with this policy that the government is going to remove asylum seekers who arrive in the UK to places like Rwanda? No, I'm not. No, I'm not. I've actually I've been saying it all along. I've got a great problem with it. Um, I think, uh, although there was a court case which suggested that we had the right to negotiate with Rwanda in the way that we have, um, I do not believe the law is clear. I'm a lawyer. I'm not one of these lefty lawyers, by the way. But I really am unhappy about it because I think that uh, this is called an illegal uh, immigration bill. And indeed, Suella Braverman, I think, talking to the Sunday Times correspondent, Matt Dathan, in the last 24 hours, has said that anyone who arrives in the country, this country, illegally can be deported to Rwanda before anything is done about their cases. If that is the case, my argument would be that under international law, an asylum seeker is not actually uh, illegal as such. Um, but there are a lot of people who do arrive here under immigration rules who are illegal. And therefore I would be questioning who it is exactly that Suella Braverman uh, and her people are going to actually remove to Rwanda. It's not going to work because it it is a, not a properly focused or indeed properly legally justified piece of legislation. Now, that's fascinating because, of course, you know, what Suella Braverman has been saying is that the courts have approved her Rwanda plan. There is obviously a, a review at the moment. We expect to hear more on that in April. Yeah. She says the courts say it's legal and she believes that the government does have the power to remove people who arrive here well, illegally because the government has the right to police its own borders. You're saying you don't think that's true. No, I don't. I don't think it's true. I'm I, one of the people, incidentally, you were talking, I think someone was talking about Dublin 
uh, agreements earlier. I was one of the people that drafted the Dublin agreements, which of course applied throughout EU when we were members of the EU. And this did give us some powers in relation to moving people back uh, through the EU who had come to our country, you know, for processing because we were all part of one entity, which was the EU outside of, in fact, Dublin, and I think that was also said, Dublin has not succeeded. It's one of my less glamorous success stories, I have to say. It's not a success story at all. Um, disappointingly, because of course, inevitably, when you are sharing responsibility among nation states, all of whom believe that they have some clear powers for their own borders, um, you're going to get people who don't agree. And of course, because the greatest burden of uh, numbers is on the states facing the Mediterranean, that's Italy and Greece, for instance, and Malta, um, an, unfair, an unfair set of responsibilities on those people compared with ourselves, for instance. Mm. It was never going to work, and it hasn't worked, and therefore the whole of the EU is now looking again at how it can restate and, or work this through. And I think we, even though we're outside of the EU, we really have to be part of it as an associated party. If we can do that, that is actually the way in which we can sort this, by then putting the amount of power that those combined countries have onto the origination states, like Albania, like uh, yeah. parts of North Africa. And I suppose the government would say, you know, they are working with Albania, they have a returns agreement, which yes. is starting to see some success, and that yes. actually we are working with the French government to put more patrols onto the beaches on the French side. We're putting a huge amount of resourcing into that financially. Yes. I suppose my question to you is, if you don't believe that this would work, why do you think the Conservative government is, is currently spending so much time selling this as a policy? Well, as I say, I think it's one of the sticking points here. It's a, it, 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 it continues the sort of uh, fractious relationships within our party, sadly. Um, and I think it's, it, it's the government thinking that the public as a whole, um, A, they like the slogan, stop the boats. B, uh, the public, I think, uh, always have a, an interesting relationship with immigration policy. And when I was immigration minister, I tried my best to damp down emotions on both sides of this argument, because really, uh, I fully agree with the government's wish to deport more people who shouldn't be in our country, whether they failed to meet the criteria for asylum, or whether they are illegal immigrants proper, and also speeding up the process of um, dealing with claims, which again, both two items of the new bill that we're putting through Parliament. Um, but I just think this showboating, this sort of sloganizing which whips up an awful lot of emotions in the country is not it is not the way to handle the delicate issue of immigration frankly i mean that sounds to me like you have some issues with the types of language that is being used by the home secretary at the moment is that the case yes i have i have and indeed i've just looked at you know online i've been looking at some of the media coverage of this visit to rwanda pictures of our home secretary leaping around with great excitement uh, waving her arms around and all the rest of it um i don't think that's the way home secretaries should go on i have to be critical of her i'm afraid i think previous home secretaries have behaved in a more what can i say a more calm and determined manner should she I, I, I introduced the term by the way firm but fair in relation to immigration rules mm. And I always believe that was the way to handle it. But I just don't like sloganising of this kind, particularly with a delicate subject uh, uh, that we know it all is. Yeah. Is Sue Ella Braverman fit to be Home Secretary, in your view? It's not. <laughs> I'm sorry, that's, you're not going to get me to comment on that. Whether she's fit or not is a matter for the Prime Minister. Mm. Um, my, own view is, my own view is that a Home Secretary needs to be, um, shall we say, a, a different sort of character. I would prefer to have someone who is very stable, determined, yes, but also willing to work with international parties to solve this problem in a way which looks responsible, but at the same time is grown up. I take it this is not a policy that you will be supporting when it comes to the House of Lords. And I, and I suppose I want to step back a little bit because you've posed a recent a question in a recent interview about whether the Conservative Party is still the same one that you were first attracted to. Do, do you feel that you still fit within the party? Well, I've been in the party so many years and in the party's moved in all kinds of directions because the Conservative Party, its great advantage over other parties is that it's flexible. It doesn't have ideology. Unfortunately, though, I think what we've seen in very recent years is a more ideological um, approach by certain elements in the party, which I think has made it too sharp 
to appeal to the, if you like, Middle England. And I think we need to get back now. I'll stay with the party because I've been a member too long now to leave. But I'm really quite keen to see us moving back into the ground that needs to be occupied in order to win that next election. And I believe that that is the middle ground of politics and it's the middle ground of Britain as well. And I think policies like this one on immigration and even some of the other sharper policies that we seem to be looking at still, I think they should be abandoned, they should be chucked out and we should get back to showing our competence in that middle ground area. As a lawyer and a parliamentarian... Hello, Adam. Hello. <laughs> do, do, do you have any reservations about the Privileges Committee process uh, with Boris Johnson that certainly some Conservatives do? Well, I, I'm, I'm, a bit, <laughs> I'm a bit concerned at the amount of pressure that has been piled by a small number of our parliamentarians on that committee which of course has a majority, a conservative majority, but it's not a committee that is really meant to work down party lines. And I hope it doesn't. I think they must resist that. I'm very disappointed that certain elements in the party and indeed around the party outside of it now are trying to put unfair pressure on those members to try and make them decide something uh, which may or may not be the way they want to go. And I think myself that if we have a privileges committee, it has to be left alone. There mustn't be anybody who interferes with it when it's doing its work or whatever that outcome might be. I, I think that we need to have that committee. It may need even beefing up in future in view of the number of transgressions which parliamentarians seem to have been involved in in recent times. But uh, please, let's not just have that nonsense going on of trying to pressure individuals who are on it. I mean, there are, of course, those who say, look, the reality is that uh, politicians on all sides do say things which turn out not to be true and that therefore they believe singling out Boris Johnson is, is, is somehow a witch hunt. No, I mean, there's an element, there's a Boris Johnson element, as we all know now, who, who um, have, have uh, benefited from Boris Johnson's leadership and who are still around and, and uh, have taken whatever vows they've taken uh, in relation to Johnson and his future. Um, I think we have to be a little more dispassionate about it all. And, uh, you know, certain things have been alleged, certain things need inquiring into. And if the person involved is uh, guilty of anything, then so be it. As far as I'm concerned, uh, the party needs to move on. I think we're spending far too much time either attacking Boris Johnson for what he may or may not have done or supporting Johnson to the nth degree, that isn't really relevant. And it, it distracts us completely from the importance of governing the country. And Lord Kirkhope, finally, on that point, the Windsor framework, the uh, for the Brexit deal to oh. try and solve the problems in uh, between Northern yes. Ireland and mainland GB, likely to come to a vote this week in the Commons. What's your take on that? Is it a successful compromise, do you think? I think it's a very successful compromise. And actually, um, it does show the Prime Minister up in the right sort of way. He's He's actually been a little slow off the mark, perhaps, because of all the background and where, you know, what's happened before and so on. But I do think this is an example of where his negotiating skills clearly have been deployed speedily, but also very well. And uh, the, other th the final thing on that, perhaps, is that um, by moving ahead in this way, which seems to me very sensible for the people of Northern Ireland in particular, uh, we are at the same time um, maintaining a level of trust which we needed to recreate both with the EU, but also with other international neighbours, international friends like the United States, um, who really do believe in the Good Friday Agreement and believe in getting this matter disposed of to the satisfaction of the people of Northern Ireland. I think it's a very good operation, a good deal. And I do hope my colleagues in the House of Commons see sense. Um, I think the vast majority of my party will, but they'd better do so this week and let's move on after that.